So we hear the HP booth, right? Correct. And um, here showing a picture of a simulation yeah. of a supercomputer in space. Is that what it is? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're doing supercomputer for space yeah. missions? Correct. We place a supercomputer in space so that on our mission to Mars, we'll have some onboard computing capabilities. So right now, is it on the ISS? Yes, we have one on the International yeah. Space Station. It was launched August 14th, and it was powered up. Last, all right, and it was powered up on uh, September 14th, and has been up and running as we want it to be since then. So, uh, big question for my website is called: uh, Is it one of those ARM-based supercomputers, <laughs> or is it something else? No, it's an Intel-based two-socket Xeon general-purpose computer. So it's often just used in many data centers here on Earth. But that uses a lot of power, right? It was using uh, 500 watts of power, all coming from solar cells, so it's the most energy efficient system out there. It's free electricity and free cooling. So that's actually not too much power? Not too much power, no. But it is doing one trillion calculations per second. One trillion? One With trillion. How, many, how much power? 500 watts. 500 watts. Uh, regular like uh, a gamer with a desktop that runs full speed, he runs more than 100, he runs 200, more right? Than that. That's correct. So yes. you just have two of those gamers. Two of those gamers in there. Two and a half. But I'm not generating any graphics, and I have no keyboard, mouse, or monitor. This is real science work and real benchmarks. So um, why is it so important? It's, it's going to be very important for the Mars mission, right? To have, right. Yes. Because you, you, don't, you don't want to wait 8 or 18 or 16 minutes or I don't know how long it takes for the signal to come back. Oh, it's 24 minutes one way, best case, 24 minutes back. To Mars? Yes, for a signal. No. No? No, it's, 20, it's further out there. That's when Mars is on the other side of Earth, uh, other side of the sun compared to the Earth, right? Yeah, 24. But if it's on the same side, it could be shorter, right? Uh, no, it runs about 24 minutes and longer. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that, that's too long. That's too long. If something goes wrong, you're going to need to do the math, the calculations, the follow your procedures much faster than relying on uh, the support staff back on Earth. But normally, if it goes wrong, you need a, a real-time uh, feedback so you can, you can keep improving the... You know yes. what, otherwise, it's going to take months before you get it kicked off. Correct, yes. So you want to be able to take the latest and greatest commercial off-the-shelf stuff with you, and that's this test. We took it right off the factory floor uh, within a short period of time before it had to be delivered to NASA for launch on SpaceX 12. So you are the Elon Musk rocket. We were delivered by Elon Musk rocket, yes, SpaceX 12. Did he, did he examine himself personally, the, 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 the cargo? The, Not that know? I know of. He didn't check it? He didn't sign it off? Not that I know of. NASA signed off on it, for sure. Did you see the rocket launch? I was there for the rocket launch. Was it nervous time? Nervous few seconds? Extremely minutes. nervous time. The launch is very, very exciting. Uh, the landing is pretty exciting too. It's they, really cool. Did the, landing. the landing is within sight of the launch. Oh, yeah, they it relanded. At it the relanded same yeah, back at the Kennedy Space Center. Correct. The same, same amazing trick you just did recently yeah, with the. It was SpaceX heavy. Yes. Were you crying? I was crying. <laughs> I was very excited. I was crying when I saw that double, double uh, landing. But when you see your project get into space, you, you must be crying a little bit. I was. Choked up and teary-eyed. And another significant thing about the SpaceX Heavy launch is, while that was going on, we were doing repairs to our system on the ISS. Okay, what's that mean? That's two totally separate space operations going on independent of each other. It's no longer one thing that is an experiment that is a test by a government entity. It is a, it is a marketplace now. Space is a marketplace. Uh, so, uh, can we start here? Uh, what, what are you wearing right here? It's a I'm wearing a lapel pin uh, delivered to me by the ISS office. <laughs> this is the ISS. It's a huge, actually, thing. The ISS yes. is huge. Yes. It's a little bit longer than a American football field or a little bit larger than a, a soccer field. So they're busy right now every day with your supercomputer? Or? Busy every day. We're in constant contact with it every five seconds. 
We have an hour a day of allocated time where we can actually interact with the payload and do things uh, live. And then once a week, we're in communication with NASA about uh, a review of the past week and what we're going to do the next week. So uh, basically, uh, the technicians that are the astronauts yes. installed your gear. Yes. They switched it on the cable, and everything, and now you can remotely use it from Earth. Correct. Whatever you want, right? Correct. Or Just one like hour per day at least. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Just like you get into Google or log into your email, etc. I log into a supercomputer in space. Log into space. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. That's cool. Every time I do it, every day. Is this the only supercomputer in space? That is correct. Yes. And we're gener we're doing one trillion calculations per second, called a teraflop. Uh, so, are you trying to kind of like simulate, emulate uh, scenarios that could happen at the Mars mission? Is that what you're doing a little bit? Uh, no, the primary purpose of this very first mission is to prove that we can last for a year. And so, therefore, we're, we're running a set of internationally recognized benchmarks that stress to the max every aspect of the computer. Compute, memory, storage, I.O., networking. We want to stress every component as much as we can in order to make sure that when we go, we need to know. Because we're going definitely in uh, 2022. 2022. Or 2024 with people and 2022 with just cargo. Cargo, right? right. That's the plan, right? That's the plan. Yeah. So there's several people have several plans. But by uh. 2022 and 2024, there might be some new chipsets, some new server chips, some new maybe ARM is going to be great. Could be, yes. It's called the HP Moonshot for real. HP, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Moonshot for real, yeah. A little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. That's Mars shot. A Mars shot. An HP Mars shot. Yeah. Uh, that's all the ARM stuff. Correct, that's all ARM. Could you be considering that? Uh, correct, we just wanted to make sure that the electronics could last a year, and so we took the most common uh, high-performance yeah. computer server available, and that's a two-socket Xeon. But as that market evolves, we'll again, of course, want to test those other options. I'm sure when they send those uh, first missions to Mars, there's going to be a bunch of ARM processors and the rocket and the... I don't know. There's all these things I don't going build on. the rockets, right? It's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. Okay. So this happening, uh, uh, and uh, HP is playing a big role in space. Yes, we are. And our partnership with NASA is very strong. We've had a partnership with NASA for many, many years. Uh, their largest supercomputer is a, a very large HPE 8600 acquired when HPE acquired uh, Silicon Graphics. And we continue to grow that system and push the bounds of high performance computing here on Earth. And the lessons we're learning are trans transferring into space.